Uh, this is a diagram in your course pack. I think it's page 116. Uh, uh, so please uh, turn to that page and we can fill it in together. So this is basically a summary of um, uh, the, the endocrine system. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to label the glands and we're going to write out all the hormones that are coming out uh, from uh, each of these glands. So let's begin uh, with this one uh, at the top, right? That is located at the back of the of the brain, uh, and this is the pineal gland. Okay, pineal gland. And as you remember, the pineal gland uh, secretes a, a hormone called melatonin, and melatonin is going to help you go to sleep, basically. All right, so that's melatonin. Next, we have uh, over here um, on the left. Uh, it's it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, you can you can kind of guess where it's pointing at. It is pointing at your uh, hypothalamus. Okay, hypothalamus. Let me change the thickness of the pen here. Hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus uh, is going to secrete. Uh, uh, several hormones, uh, and we have those that are going to be stored in the um, uh, posterior pituitary, right? So store in PP, posterior pituitary gland, right? Um, they are created in the hypothalamus, however, right? Which include the uh, anti-diuretic hormone uh, for water conservation, and we have the oxy, oxytocin. Right, uh, which is important for the letdown of the milk as well as the uterus uh, contraction during labor. Uh, we have another set of hormones coming from the um, hypothalamus, uh, and we call them uh, releasing, releasing hormones. Right, and the releasing hormones are going to have a direct uh, control on the. Uh, AP, the anterior pituitary, uh, which include GnRH, uh, TRH, and CRH. Okay? So each of these things are going to uh, uh, allow the anterior pituitary gland to release uh, and other hormones. There are inhibiting hormones as well, uh, which we uh, 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 talked about, but we didn't actually uh, learn any specific examples. Uh, the inhibiting hormones would be uh, uh, working uh, against the releasing hormone, right? They would stop the anterior pituitary gland from releasing any hormones. So let's go to the pituitary, right? The pituitary is separated into uh, anterior here, uh, as well as the posterior shown here. So the posterior pituitary gland, right? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it doesn't make any hormone, but it will store the uh, ADH created in hypothalamus, and it will store the uh, oxytocin created in the uh, uh, hypothalamus. And also, uh, what we have here is uh, the AP, right, anterior pituitary gland, and the anterior pituitary gland uh, produces uh, 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 six hormones in total. We have the nontropic, right, which include growth hormone that allows you to grow. Too much gives you uh, gigantism, too little gives you dwarfism. And we have the other, the prolactin or PRL. And prolactin uh, is what uh, allows women to uh, pregnant women to make milk, right? Prolactin makes the milk. Oxytocin is going to allow the milk to come out. And we have the tropic hormones, right? The tropic hormones targets and other endocrine glands. Uh, and we have four. In the order we learned them, it is FSH, LH, uh, TSH, and ACTH. All right? Those are all the hormones from the anterior pituitary glands, six of them. Moving down, we have the uh, thyroid here. The thyroid gland uh, secretes three hormones. We have calcitonin, which helps you bring calcium level back down in the blood when it's too high. We have T3, T4, which are responsible for increasing your metabolism. At the 
uh, back of the thyroid, right? So, so this is the thyroid at the back of the thyroid, which you can't really see. But you know, again, we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to pretend you are looking at the person from the side, so you might be able to see a little bit of it. Okay, so these these four tiny tiny glands, right? Uh, you will have another two like around here and here uh, uh, behind the thyroid, right? These little ones, uh, they are the para thyroid. Okay, parathyroid gland, and the parathyroid gland secretes one hormone, which is PTH. Okay, PTH. Let me write that again right, uh, in, in, in black. PTH, parathyroid hormone. So PTH uh, is responsible for increasing calcium level in the blood when it is too low. Right. So in that respect, uh, what we can do is we can we can uh, take out our highlighter uh, and let's highlight let's highlight PTH uh, or let's put a put a star next to PTH and we will put a star next to calcitonin uh, because they are antagonistic hormones. And let's go up here and and include a legend. Okay. So the star over here means uh, calcitonin and PTH, they uh, are antagonistic pairs and they are responsible for maintaining maintaining blood calcium homeostasis. All right, so moving on, all right, uh, below the thyroid gland, uh, inferior to the thyroid gland, we have another one here. And this one uh, is the thymus. The thymus is responsible for producing thymosin. And in uh, the lecture notes, there is only one slide on it. Uh, it is responsible for uh, uh, the maturation of T cells, right? The thymosin. If we continue to move down, we see the kidneys here. And on top of the kidneys are the adrenal gland. And adrenal glands have two sections to it. We have the outer portion. Uh, which would be the adrenal cortex, and we have the inner portions, uh, which would be the adrenal uh, medulla, right? So the adrenal adrenal cortex uh, is responsible for secreting uh, hormones for long-term stress, and that includes uh, mineral corticoids such as aldosterone. Aldosterone will increase uh, sodium absorption and uh, uh, bring your blood volume back up uh, and increase your blood pressure. And there is an other um, hormones for long-term stress, uh, belongs to the category of glucocorticoids. Uh, and the main glucocorticoids is cortisol. Cortisol, all right? So cortisol is going to increase resource availability in the body by uh, uh, breaking down glycogen, uh, breaking down fat and proteins. Next, we have the adrenal, adrenal medulla. And the adrenal medulla is uh, going to be uh, directly under the uh, nervous control uh, from uh, uh, the hypothalamus, right? Through action potential, through the sympathetic system. Uh, and it secretes two hormones, the epi, epinephrine, uh, as well as norepinephrine. Just remember, epinephrine is same as adrenaline. Uh, norepinephrine is same as noradrenaline. They kind of do same things, okay? They increase your heart rate, uh, increase your uh, breathing rate. Uh, you're gonna have pupil dilation, uh, and, and, and basically it, it causes you to uh, have the fight or flight response. Next, we have the pancreas. All right, pancreas is located right here, and the pancreas is special because it is both exocrine and endocrine. It's exocrine gland because it secretes pancreatic juice through the duct into your duodenum. Uh, it's endocrine because it produces uh, insulin and glucagon, and these goes directly into the bloodstream. So that's why the pancreas is also an endocrine gland. There is also something called somatostatin in the in the lecture notes, but I said you don't have to know it for this for this course. We'll focus on insulin and glucagon. The insulin and glucagon deserve an other star. Okay, so this star is, it means insulin and glucagon are antagonistic pairs. They work against each other to maintain, maintain 
uh, blood glucose level, right? So after a meal, uh, your blood glucose level goes up, insulin will be released to bring it back down. Uh, if you're skipping a meal, then glucose level goes down, uh, which will trigger the release of glucagon, and glucagon will try to bring the glucose level back up. Moving down, we have the uh, testicles here, uh, and we have the ovaries here. Um, so ovaries in females, um, they would make two hormones, the estrogen, which comes from the uh, developing follicles, uh, and estrogen will do two things, uh, generally speaking, right? Um, it will thicken the endometrium, uh, it will go back to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland, uh, and using positive feedback, it will increase the release of FSH, LH, as well as GnRH. The other one is progesterone. Progesterone is more important in the uh, luteal phase uh, of the menstrual cycle, and uh, it further thickens the endometrium, uh, and it will go back to uh, suppress GnRH, suppress uh, FSH and LH, uh, because by the time you have uh, 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 the luteal phase, the egg is already in the fallopian tube, and so you do not need another follicle to develop. Uh, the testicles. Right, uh, produce the male hormone testosterone, and testosterone is the male counterpart of progesterone. You can see they kind of end in the same, 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 same uh, suffix. Uh, and testosterone promotes uh, spermatogenesis, right? And it will also go back to the brain uh, as a negative feedback to uh, regulate its own secretion. So that's all the hormones uh, that you've learned. If you know where things comes out, uh, um, which which organ secretes them, you should be able to answer most of the questions uh, in uh, uh, on on the final test. Now, uh, just one last thing, I want you to take out your highlighter, uh, different colors, and um, I want you to do the following, okay? Uh, or you can just watch and and do it later, okay? So first, I am going to uh, highlight. Uh, I am going to highlight uh, GnRH. Okay, and over here I'm gonna highlight FSH, LH, and I'm gonna highlight estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So the reason I highlight all these things is because the pink pathways, right? The pink, all these pink stuff, they are. Let me uh, just uh, zoom in here for you. The pink, the pink, the, all the pink stuff we we highlight is part of one of the three hypothalamic. Uh, pituitary axes that we've talked about, and this one is for reproduction, reproduction, right? So somehow it controls the reproductive system in male and female. The female one is a little bit different because in addition to the regular negative feedback, estrogen does positive feedback, okay? Next, we are going to highlight TRH. TRH is thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, thyroid releasing hormone rather. Okay, the thyroid releasing hormone will go and trigger the release of thyroid stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary gland, which will travel to the thyroid gland, causing you to release T3 and T4. So all these yellow stuff that I just highlighted, it's the pathway that regulates metabolism. Finally, we have the uh, the green one, the CRH. The CRH uh, is going to uh, be released from the hypothalamus, which allows the release of adrenal corticotropin hormone, the ACTH, which would then go down over here to your adrenal cortex, uh, causing you to release these uh, stress-related hormone, okay? And so the green path is responsible for regulating uh, we can say long-term stress, okay? Long-term stress. So just one last thing, the cortisol usually will uh, negatively uh, uh, regulate itself, but under long-term stressful situation, the uh, central nervous system will override that negative feedback, and so your cortisol level will continue to rise uh, to a level uh, that is uh, uh, much, much, much greater than what you would have normally. So please practice uh, drawing this diagram several times uh, before the final test. Uh, it's very, very important that you know where the hormones come from and, and how they interact with each other. Okay, thanks for watching.